Hey guys, Bill Blanchin here, and today I'm going to show you how to stretch an image using PixInsight software just with PixelMath. So first and foremost, I'd like to say that the equations that I'm using in my PixelMath were not written by me. In fact, you can find them online for everyone to use, and special thanks to the creators who put them out there specifically for this purpose. So all I did with these equations were applied them in a way that could be used with pixel math, plus added some controls that allow you to control the outcome of the image. To show you how these work, let's get started. So what you're gonna do is down in the description below is a download link. When you download the scripts, you're gonna see a, um, a file name here called stretching math. You're just gonna drag this over onto your workspace and here you have it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with an example of M42. As you can see, we got the Orion Nebula here. If I turn the screen stretch off, you can see that we do have linear data. This uh, button here, this is just a display of what a stretch would look like using uh, default settings within PixInsight. But as you can see, it is a STF stretch. So if we actually open up and turn this back to linear, if we actually stretch this, we have the same view. So this is just a view stretch. Uh, this is length. Um, typically, you do want to use a length stretch on data that has already been color calibrated. Um, when it comes to like show or Hubble palette data, you don't typically do a length stretch unless you do uh, background neutralize it. But what you can do is do an unlinked stretch and it'll actually set the backgrounds to the same median value. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but for right now, I will just change this back to here. It, again, this is just for view. So to get these values in PixInsight, you typically have to use your histogram transformation. And you guys probably seen this a million times on tutorials, but you got to open this. You got to stretch it either to this value or you can modify these values here. We're just going to use this. And then you bring this over and you bring it over here. And if I just turn the screenshots off, you can see that we're now non-linear. Now, you can do it this way. It's, uh, it's just a process where you're actually having to open this, open this, transfer over. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I didn't really uh, care for, I, I like to keep things simple, stupid. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of do similar to what I've done with some of the, some of the other techniques that I have. I wanted to be able to stretch an image just in pixel math. Well, luckily for us, there's math out there that's available. So that's what I've done is I put together uh, these three options for you guys. So to show you how this works, what I'm gonna do is let me undo this so I can take it back to linear, close these down because we don't need them anymore. Now, if I wanted to do an unlinked stretch, boom, it created an image for me automatically that's been, this is an unlinked stretch. If I wanted to do a link stretch that's what this would look like I'll get to this third one here in a minute but that's how simple this process works um, but again all the credit I, I put this into pixel math but all the credit goes to the guys who created it so the first method that we're going to talk about is the unlinked stretch and that's this right here okay so the main developer of pixel site he put out an equation about seven uh, yeah about seven years ago uh, out on the you know the the PixInsight forum, uh, he threw out the equation there, and then, and then I put it in a way that uh, that we can use it uh, in Pixel Math. So what he's done here is he's actually using the uh, MTF function, which if you go back to like my star reduction or my RGB to narrowband transfer method, I I use this quite a bit. Um, but controlling the midpoint of of a stretch curve is, is what he's doing here, but he's he's also created some offsets. So think about stretching an image as like stretching a rubber band. You know, we don't need it, we don't want to stretch all the, the highlights off because that would we would be losing data that way. So we're doing a, a non-linear stretch where we're kind of taming down the highlight but bringing out all the shadows. But the byproduct of that is you're also going to stretch the shadows. So what he's done here is he's created offsets that actually brings the shadows back down. So the first part here I've got is it's a variable that you can change, but I don't recommend doing it. It's just a default value of uh, two uh, minus uh, 
you can play around with these values if you're trying to bring more um, faint objects out of the shadows by all means try it but for right now in this example we're just going to keep it at default the b value this is actually your the median value okay so just to back up i just uh, created a little you know quick little tool here just says median dollar sign t so for example if i drag this over I can read what the median values are of this image. And as you can see, it's non-stretched, they're very low. So if I go back to this here, now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over and stretch it. So now if I read the median value of this image, you can see that the median value is 0.25. That means out of all these pixel pixels for your R, G, and B channels, the stretch actually increase the image brightness um, to have a median value of 0.25. So again, the median of all the pixels for those channels. So if we wanted to say, have a stretch that was a little bit less intense, all we gotta do is lower the median value. So if we drag this over, it creates an image over here. As you can see, it's lower in brightness. And if I drag this here, you can see that the median value is 0.15. So the unlinked stretch, as you can see, it actually shifted the median value of all three channels to the same value. So one of the reasons why that's it's a, a, it's a good thing is like, for example, say you have an image that is a show image. And as you can see, whenever you put together SHO, your backgrounds are gonna be different. You're typically gonna do a, a, a background neutralization, but for a show image, you really don't need to because you could just do an unlinked stretch, bring this over. And as you can see what it's done, it set the median value of all channels to the same value. Essentially, it's like doing a background neutralization, but it's not using the minimums, it's, it's using the, the median of the image. And on top of that, it's actually stretching uh, each RGB to, to the same median point. So it actually can help bring out a lot of your, your fainter details, like your O3 or uh, S2. So for people who do a lot of Hubble palette imaging, that's typically what you do as an unlinked stretch. So let me close this. And what I'll do is show you the link stretch. So the link stretch, it works very similar, but the link stretch, it only works on RGB data. So unlink, you can, that's what you're gonna use for mono or um, you know, RGB data, but your link stretch, again, this is typically what you do on an image that's already been color calibrated, where we want to, um, where, where we're actually stretching uh, each channel uh, based on like where that, that where that current position is. So what it's doing, it's looking at the median value for for R, G, and B, and it's taking the the mean of that, and then it's doing the same thing for the 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 MAD, the uh, median average deviation. So by averaging that out, it's kind of moving them equally, uh, creating a length stretch. So with this, what Juan has done, is it's the same thing. If we wanted a lesser stretch, you could see that it's linked everything together, um, but we have a, you know, a lesser brightness image. And if I bring this down, you can actually see that the median values are still the same, but everything was still kind of moved uh, equally, thus keeping them linked. So for color calibrated images, that's what you typically use is the link stretch and for stuff like show or, or if you just wanna do something different, you have the option to do unlink. Uh, but if you're doing uh, mono uh, stretching just by itself, you can just use an unlink. But that's really, that's very simple. Um, so just to show you, I'm gonna change this back. Actually, this image right here is a 0.25. Now, if I click this, as you can see, they're they're near identical because this is the same formula that he's using here. He's actually using like a default of uh, 0.25, I believe, for for 
the, the viewing stretch here. Uh, but this is actually taking it and just turning it into a nonlinear image. So yeah, again, thank you Juan Canero for putting that out there. It's uh, been a big help and I really do appreciate it. So let's talk about the third option. And you're probably gonna know this person because he recently came out with a script in which he got help um, developing the script with uh, Mike Branfield and that is David Payne. Now David Payne is the one who created the the, the math for the, the generalized hyperbolic stretching uh, script. So if you haven't uh, got this installed on your computer you probably should because it is like the best way to stretch an image. It's very powerful and uh, yeah it's a very good tool. So before he even created the script, he put the math out on PixInsight uh, form for people to use. I think he even put it out on like Astro Ben and a few other places. Um, but as soon as I saw the formula, I went ahead and put it into uh, Pixel Math so that it could be uh, used in a, like a, a drag and drop situation, but also one that you can change variables. So what I've done is I created something very similar to the other two. Again, thanks David for putting this formula out there because it's been a really big help um, for, for me and now everyone can use it. Uh, I still suggest that people actually use the, the, the actual script because it does give you more control. But if you are looking for just a simple drag and drop, a uh, simple uh, stretch solution, that's, that's why I made this. So, how this works is it actually, it's like a combination of, of everything and then some. A regular histogram stretch, like what I just showed you before, that's what that's more like a harmonic stretch or a, an exponential type stretch. On an image like M42, you can see that the core, it's, it's pretty bright. So if I was just to do an unlinked stretch, you know, if you look at the trapezium area, you can't even see the stars and uh, there's other methods that you can do like HDR type blending but let's let's not worry about that right now so um, traditional methods uh, if you didn't want to do a histogram stretch were something like mask stretch or or even this one for example and I'll just do this real quick this is a arc sign stretch and let me hit reset now an arc sign stretch okay so with an arc strand stretch let me turn that display off because for, for whatever reason it, it comes through here um, you set the black point and then you're going to start stretching here I'm actually probably going to have to run this in two different modes and set the black point bring that down a little bit and bring this up again this is just an example so I'll just run with that real fast. Now, as you can see with the arc sign stretch, it really brings out like the color saturation. But if you look at the stars, I mean, they get really funky looking. I mean, yeah, so the star cores stay the same, but then you're, you're minimizing the, it, it's hard to explain, but the way it tames down the brightness of the, you know, outside of the core area, it just, it looks horrible. I mean, the, the colors, and this is just straight out of a color calibration, believe it or not. So I've never liked the way ArcSign looks, but it does bring out a lot of the saturation. So let me undo this and get that back to normal. So with what David's done here is he's created a couple different things. You have uh, the first variable here, which is the strength of the stretch. And then we got a B value here and this is what this is what's going to dictate the curve that's going to be used, whether it's more exponential or a tame down version or arc sign or even uh, more uh, drastic change in, in that that curve angle. Uh, but he's also doing something else where he's actually creating an S curve. So one of the points, and I've actually just kind of made it uh, automated just to keep it simple. It's the uh, SP value. Um, in his script, you're, you're actually uh, setting that black point to be your SP value. I'm just picking a point that's just behind uh, the median value, just to keep it simple. 
Um, but basically what this is doing, it's actually a, a not stretching the areas of, of, of an area in the shadows, but then anything past that SP value, that's where you're getting the big S curve stretch. And this B value is what, again, controls the strength of the, the, or the, the curve. So as an example, I'm going to start off as a, a B value of one. That's going to be very similar to the, the, the hyperbolic, or I'm sorry, the uh, histogram transformation stretch. Oh, and the highlight point, that's basically your, your brightness point. And just so you guys know, if you go to like, for example, this is like the, the area in the Pix Insight forum where he actually, oh, sorry about that, where he actually uh, uh, put on the code. But if you actually go uh, to uh, like this website, which is GHS Astro, you'll have links to all the videos that he's got out there and all the information and also the script for you to download and to run it on uh, PixInsight. But uh, he's got a lot of videos that goes through like all the settings on his script. Uh, but try, just to keep things simple, I just got a default value for the highlight point, just the one. But if you do want to know a little bit more about that, I would highly suggest you go to this site and watch the videos. But for, for this example, I'm just going to use a value of one, which is going to be very similar to that of the shape of a histogram transformation stretch. And as you can see, the stretch wasn't very strong. So what we can do, I'll say double the value. Bring this over. Move this here. And as you can see, we did get brighter. But the way it stretches, it, you know, it, it is a bit different, but even though uh, we're starting to get bright here, you can still see more of the detail than, than what we were seeing in that initial histogram stretch. So let's go even brighter. Let's go like 24. So as you can see, we're, we're getting brighter. This is getting very similar to that of you know, the brightness here, it's maybe a little bit darker, so I can keep going up higher here. But uh, for the sake of this, the video length, I won't. But this is, again, how you can stretch an image just using this, this value here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep this open as an example. In fact, I'll just kind of bring this over here. So instead of actually using a one value, let's try changing this to a three. Now, the higher this goes, the more we're actually kind of going into that uh, arc sine type uh, curve, uh, but it's actually not bringing out the saturation like an arc sine stretch would. So as you can see, now the brightness in the center, it's not as high. The stars don't look horrible like they do in an arc sine stretch, but now you can start to see the trapezium. So by playing around with these values and also the curves, gives you um, more control over the areas that are just really super bright in an image. So again, this is one of my favorite uh, stretching methods. The cool thing about this is, is you can drag it and if you already have like a, an icon workflow, this can be a part of your icon workflow and it gives you an idea of, of what, you've, what process you went um, to, to create that image in the event that you need to go backwards. But, uh, but yeah, again, uh, thanks Dave for putting this, this uh, equation out there. And uh, yeah, I wanted to get it into a, a pixel math routine. So hopefully things like this can help you guys in your workflow and speed it up. So, uh, but yeah, that's all I've got. So I uh, hope you uh, enjoy uh, using these techniques.